Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Vegas TMI, where we explore the topics that make the city timely, memorable, and iconic. I'm Nancy Byrne, and on this episode, we're going to talk about a profession that deserves all the accolades we can possibly muster up. I'm talking about nursing. Anyone who has ever spent time in a hospital, either personally or perhaps visiting a loved one or friend, can attest to the fact that nurses are the caregivers right there on the front lines. Also, if the pandemic taught us anything at all, it taught us that this is a group of women and men who put themselves in harm's way to care for perfect strangers. These are just a couple of the reasons we celebrate International Nurses Day each year, each year on May 12th. Now, here to talk with us more about nursing, what it takes to become a nurse, the current nursing shortage, and what we here in Las Vegas are doing to remedy that shortage are Dr. Angela Amar and Dr. Nicole Leland. First, just a little bit about our guests. Dr. Angela Amar is the Dean of the UNLV School of Nursing. We've been fortunate to have her here in Las Vegas since January of 2018. Now, prior to that, Dean Amar headed up the nursing school. Uh, where, before she started heading up our nursing school, she led the undergraduate nursing programs at Emory University. And before that, she developed forensic nursing programs at Georgetown University and Boston College. And that just scratches the surface of the amazing experience she brings to the UNLV School of Nursing. Also joining us is Dr. Nicole Leland, Assistant Professor Faculty in Residence within the School of Nursing at UNLV. She joined the faculty in 2011 and serves as a professor and advisor to students in both the undergraduate and graduate programs. And she also chairs Doctor of Nursing Practice Committees. She completed a Doctor of Nursing Practice herself in 2018 with a focus on educational leadership. Whew. So you can see we've got two of the best with us. Thank you both uh, for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's go ahead and get started. We've been hearing about it on the news. Uh, there's a nursing shortage, not just here in Las Vegas, but it seems like nationwide. Um, what do you think led to that? Either one of you can jump in. I'll go. So okay. part of what people don't realize is that the one of the biggest reasons for a nursing shortage is a faculty shortage. And things that contribute to faculty shortages in large part are pay. We pay faculties much less than we pay people to practice in the hospitals and clinical areas. And so it's hard to get nursing faculty. And mm -hmm. if we had more faculty, we could also, and then it's also resources and money to have faculty, but with more faculty, we'd have more nurses. And then obviously the pandemic has really increased burnout among a lot of nurses. People are tired. Um, it's been a long two years. It's been a painful two years um, of this pandemic. Dr. Yes. Leland, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, especially, I think we all felt, even the Thunderbirds were flying over thanking you guys. <laughs> really felt for you guys, um, especially during the pandemic. Yes, absolutely. I would agree with everything Dr. Amar said. I think that the pandemic has really kind of opened our eyes to a lot of what nurses do and just how important we are. And I think our working environment um, within these different you know, facilities, not just the inpatient that we really focused on with the pandemic, but even a lot of these outpatient settings and trying to get into those, those patients' homes um, to help them if they can't make it into facilities is something that we really need to kind of focus on and think about because it not only helps us have more nurses, but it also will help have just better care all the way around for, for all of our patients, which are all of us. Well, following up on this, I guess the ratio of the population to medical professionals is way above or way below uh, what it should be. Um, and I guess the whole Las Vegas Medical District is really trying to chip in and, and remedy that. Uh, just getting the medical school here um, is, is an effort to get more doctors to learn here and want to stay here. Um, can you talk to us? I know that the School of Nursing has a lot of programs, uh, starting with young ladies all the way up to people who can become nurses. Um, and we'll st start with you, Dr. Amar. So I'll talk about the graduate programs and I'll let um, Dr. Leland talk about the undergraduate programs and high school programs. So we do offer nurse practitioner programs. Those nurse practitioner programs are for people who are a nurse and want to work independently and practice out in the community. Um, our family nurse practitioners see patients of all ages on all kinds of chronic problems and acute problems that come to them. We also have a um, nurse educator track, which trains people to teach nursing students. And a P doctoral programs, both the doctor of nursing practice 
and the PhD. So PhD program is more about generating new knowledge and the doctor of nursing practice is more about moving that knowledge into practice. And then I'll let Dr. Leland talk about our undergraduate programs. Yes, thank you. So I do focus a lot on our undergraduate programs. I love those brand new nurses that don't have licenses yet and, and are just trying to figure it out. Um, we have our traditional program that has been around for, I mean, it's what, over 60 years now, which is phenomenal. We recently um, have continued to increase the numbers that we um, admit into this program because there is such a shortage. And so we're really trying to to help with that by, by producing really good quality nurses and, and increasing in the number that we're producing. Um, we've also recently um, done a second back program, which is somebody who already has a bachelor's degree, just not in the healthcare field necessarily. Um, and we bring them into our program and really just focus on that healthcare piece that they need to graduate with that with that nursing piece of it. Um, so that program has been amazing to, to help put more nurses out into the community as well. And we, you know, are continuing to produce more and more programs. I know we just kind of focused on the ones that we already have currently up and running, but we have a lot of other things kind of in the works um, to help produce even more nurses at a variety of levels, not just in the undergraduate, but at the graduate level. So we, we we're pretty proud of what we do. And sometimes it's tiring because we try to do it in a variety of different ways to make sure that we meet not just, you know, the, the brand new nurse graduate need, but, but the need at all different levels. And Dr. Leland, we, I would imagine having the new nurses, whatever they lack in experience, on the floor experience, they, uh, they make up for an enthusiasm. So um, I, I can see why you would enjoy doing that. Um, and we um, also have a nurse. On, uh, something else, uh, the UNLV online master's program, according to uh, the uh, U.S. News and World Report, was ranked seventh in the nation. Is that correct? Our That's online amazing. programs, yes, are ranked very That's highly. Good. Very good, very good. Um, so education-wise, I revealed to these two wonderful ladies before we went on the air uh, that I wanted to be a nurse, but I simply didn't have the, um, uh, the smarts for it, at least when it came to chemistry. Um, so tell us, what, what does it take to become a nurse, the, the, uh, specifically at UNLV, but you know, sort of overall, education-wise? Do you wanna go? I'll go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> so, I'll, say, I'll start out by saying that we do offer a, high, a camp in the summer for high school students, and it sort of gets them thinking about what's required in nursing, what does it take to be a nurse. We have lots of interest in the camp. They spend a week with us. They learn simulate in the simulation center. They do CPR training, stop the bleed training. They do tours on campus. They learn about applying to college. Um, I would tell you that a nurse is a well-rounded person. Yes, there's a heavy degree of science and chemistry tough and all the other sciences are, but it's really that blend of having the sciences, but we also combine it with this sort of liberal arts core. So we do want people who are well-rounded, who've had classes in history and literature and sociology and psychology and really can relate to people and um, connect with people on multiple levels and then also be able to think through what's going on with patients and how do they then meet their needs. But it's a well-rounded educational program. Yes, I would agree with that. I think that sometimes I hear all the time exactly what you said was that I didn't have the smarts for it. And, you know, chemistry could always be very challenging. Um, same with biology, but, you know, we can kind of help get you through those. And it really is that well-rounded person. We have to remember that the patients that we're taking care of are very diverse and we want a really diverse nursing population so that we have patients, you know, that have somebody who can really kind of relate to them because you're going to take care of them better. Um, and so I think that, you know, anybody is really, you know, welcome to come into our program and we can kind of help teach them how to have a lot of those extra things. Most of our nursing students, like you said, are very driven and ambitious and enthusiastic. Um, and then we teach them probably the one thing that they're lacking, which is that assertiveness because they're so young in those undergraduate programs. And then once we get into the graduate programs, we teach them more how to, you know, apply all those those things that, that come in with those higher levels because they already have a lot of this foundation. And, and that sort of leads into my next question. Um, it, of course, it takes um, book smart, um, but are there certain personality traits that just sort of lend themselves better to being a nurse or a caregiver? 
You know, I think there's so much room for everyone in nursing. So you have the people who are very outgoing and eager and people think, well, that's all there is. But you have people who are shy and retiring. I mean, I think a commitment to want to help people, a commitment to care for people Mm -hmm. and strong leadership and ingenuity. I mean, innovation. I don't think people realize how many times nurses innovate because a patient's having a problem with something and people figure out, I mean, simple things like, it, you know, I always say ice packs and people put ice in gloves and suddenly you have an ice pack. And that sounds simple, but there's there's a lot of simple innovations that nurses do every day that sort of help make the workflow go better and help make things for better for patients. Yep. I think nurses are known for caring. I think we can see that across the world. Um, And so I think that's when people come into the profession. That's what we tend to focus on. But there's so many other attributes. And we really um, want nurses to have a variety of those attributes. So let's just say someone's thinking about becoming a nurse. Um, Is it recommended that maybe uh, they become an LPN, a licensed practical nurse first, or a certified nursing assistant? to see if they have what it takes or to see if they, um, it's really for them? I mean, I think those are all viable pathways. We mm-hmm. do have people who in high school, you can do the CNA training, the LPN training. But I think the other piece of it is that just what we were saying, there's so much room for everyone. So you have people who come into nursing who I'll say have a disability. And so maybe they're in a wheelchair and people say, well, how can you do that? But nurses also work in the community, nurses work for insurance companies, nurses work in industry. So there's lots of jobs to go around. And so you do have the nurse who says, I really don't like it when people are sick and throw up or whatever, <laughs> but but there's ways to work around just about everything. So there's room for everyone, I would say, in nursing. Yeah, that's a very good point. Dr. Yeah. Leland, anything to add? No, I think any pathway to get in, as long as it fits that person and their personality and kind of what their ultimate goal is, um, what I will just say is for most of the nurses that I've known in my career, including myself, you kind of come in and you're like, I I like people and I want to help people. And so this is what I think and this is where my goal is. And then you get in and you see all the things that we have to offer within this profession, how needed we are as nurses. And so then you have a hard time choosing because there's so many different um, options out there for you. Well, again, I hate to keep referring back to the pandemic, but um, what would you say are some of the biggest challenges of being a nurse and also some of the biggest rewards? You know, it's often like the strengths and weaknesses questions, it's kind of flip sides of the same coin. And so I do think that nurses journey with people throughout their life experiences. And so we're with babies when they're born, we're with people when they die, and we're there everywhere in between. And that journey is very incredibly an honor that people entrust you with taking care of them and being there for them. That also at times can contribute to just as much stress though, because you're there at very challenging times for people. You're there at times when people are sometimes at their worst. Um, and yet you um, still have to figure out how you take care of you in the process too, as well as help others. And so I think the hard part for a lot of nurses, and I think that led, we saw that most recently, is that the work is challenging and the work um, can be very draining and it can be very rewarding, but it's also really important to also have that way to step back and take care of yourself. And um, it's important that our healthcare systems also realize that they need to take care. It's not just about giving us a paycheck, it's about showing us that we're valued and that you care about us as well. Yes, very well said. Well, What can people do? Where can they turn if they would like more information on the UNLV School of Nursing? Um, Is there a website, a phone number um, that we can throw out there for people who might be interested? The website is where I would say, I wouldn't say Nicole's phone number or mine. (laughs) (laughs) We wouldn't do that to you. (laughs) But we do have a UNLV um, School of Nursing website and there's information about all of our programs and the camp 
website is there. And there's also a health advising center at UNLV. So if people are thinking about health careers, that's a great place to start because they do give information about applying to UNLV and the programs. Is there anything that either one of you would like to add that I haven't specifically asked, that, but you believe is important for anyone considering a career or just anyone who needs to be more informed about how wonderful our nurses are? You know, I would add that um, our motto at the school is nurse leaders start here. And we really take that seriously. And we think about leadership, not just as a position, but as sort of a mindset of kind of who we are. And you know, we have students who are leaders in the school. We have students who are leaders at the state level in student nurse organizations. And we've also had students who are leaders at the national level. Currently, we have two student leaders who are in officer roles in the National Student Nurses Association. And so I really think that at UNLV, part of what we've really tried to do is think about students come in and they're very focused, they're smart, they're bright, they're talented incredibly bright and talented. And they come in very focused on, I'm going to be a nurse, and they want to talk about nurse. And we also try to have this emphasis of helping them to see a bigger picture and to dream a bigger dream and to really think about all of the possibilities. So we bring in people from around the country. We have different kind of seminar kinds of things, but it's ways that really expose them to there's this bigger world and that the sky's really the limit and you can be you can find your place to lead and do and achieve within nursing. And that of that, I'm really proud of our faculty, yeah. staff, and students. Yes. Dr. Leland, Absolutely. any final thoughts that you'd like to pass on? Um, just know that, that we are here addressing the nursing shortage. We are here helping in any way that we can and that anybody that really, you know, has any type of desire, you know, we have the, the, the nurse camps every summer um, for these, these high school students. Um, we go out to high schools, you know, we want to, we want to capture these students really early. Um, and even, you know, some of those that are later, you know, we have nurses that, that, that come into our program, you know, in their forties as a second career. And so I don't think mm -hmm. that there's ever a time that's, a bad time to, to become a nurse and um, and really kind of dive into this profession because, again, there's so many different opportunities. Not all of our nurses end up working at the bedside. Um, yes, we love those nurses that do, but we have so many different um, opportunities and nurses are just amazing. And I loved what you touched on earlier. Just for a, a practical standpoint, when you get a nursing degree, you can take it really anywhere in the world, certainly anywhere in the country. And then there's so many options if you're not the type of person that wants to be at the bedside of someone who's sick. There are so many other options. So it's just, um, it's a wonderful career. And um, I'm so proud that we have the UNLV School of Nursing here. And apparently our city council and our mayor are too, because not too long ago, they declared April 20th, UNLV Nurses Day. And there it is right there in the council chambers. So just kind of trying to throw a little love your way and, and thank you for what you do every day. And I just want to add this one little fun fact that I discovered before I, um, while I was doing some research about this, because I thought, why May 12th? Well, May 12th was chosen because that is the birthday of Florence Nightingale. So um, in 1974, uh, the International Council of um, nurses established it as a day that we're going to set aside internationally to honor our nurses. But if I may add, I think we should honor our nurses every day. And I, I mean that. Thank you so much for what you do um, and for trying to get more people to do it and the right people to do it and training them so well. So um, I want to thank Dr. Angela Amar and Dr. Um, Nicole Leland. Thank you so much for being with us and thank you for everything you do for us. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it for this Vegas TMI, and we'll see you for the next time.